In today's video, we're gonna be checking out a digital microscope, which comes all in one with the screen, some lights, the base, and the scope itself. So this is the box it comes in. We can see a picture here of what it looks like. Let's go ahead and open it up. So it's pretty simplistically packed. We got the manual that goes through the assembly process and how to use the scope itself. And here are the technical parameters. So here we have an HDMI cable. It looks like micro to normal with also some kind of bracket there. We get a little calibration card for the scope, a CD, and I guess if you wanted to connect your computer to the scope, you can use this disc for the software. We got a 32 gig micro SD card. You guys can see we got a pretty large screen, seven inches, buttons here in the front. It is all plastic construction. There's a little handle here in the back, which is kind of cool. It also looks like have a battery here. That's interesting. So this appears to work without constant power because we do have a charging port there. There's our output to the HDMI if you want to connect this to like a monitor or a television. And we got the light adjustment there. And at the end there, we got the light adjustment. On the other side, this is where we're going to plug in our micro SD card. Below that, we have the scope itself. We can see it's got LED lights there. And this is also the focus adjustment. All right, so let's see what else we got. The stand or the mechanism that makes it go up and down, and it is completely metal. Here we have the base, which also has these two flexible LED lights that you can direct down into what you're looking at. And the base is not too heavy. This is metal here, and there's like a little plastic cover. The feet are foam, they're pretty thick. We do have a USB port there that I guess is required for the lighting. It appears like this has separate power than the scope. So we got a couple more things in here. The cables required for charging, which we get the USB to micro, and then also a cable for the base, which is a USB-C to USB. And we also get a remote where you can control it from a distance. All right, so let's see if we can't figure out how to put this thing together. Should be quite simple. So on the bottom of this, mechanism here we have some threads they're very fine and that's going to actually thread into the base here but be careful because they're quite fine and you want to start it just right because if you don't you could cross thread them and you won't be able to really get in there so yeah just kind of make sure it wants to go on its own before you force it once it starts going you can go down as much as it goes and then this locking nut here will twist the opposite direction while holding this piece straight to lock in the position. Yeah, not too complicated, but just maybe it could be a little hard to start it. We also have this adjustment here, adjust the tilt up and down, so. But yeah, I mean, it's pretty explanatory here. As we run this down, this main piece with the screen and the scope will just sit right in here and then we can lock it in. So I'm definitely gonna have to tighten this bolt up because if I don't, it just drops down. So I'm gonna go get a wrench for that. All right, so I got the correct wrench. So let's go ahead and see if we can tighten this bolt up where it's going to hold. There we go. So yeah, we just need to tighten it up a bit. Not too much so we can still move it like this if we need to, but I think I'm gonna snug mine up a little more. And there we go. That should be pretty good. So it does stay now, no problem. So this little knob here locks the up and down motion. So when you get it to where you want it, you can lock it with this and as simple as that guys pretty much our device is ready to go and by the way our screen does tilt on its own also straight up like that or pretty much 90 degrees yeah look at that laying down so you can see it from down completely or any position you want so for the video i guess we'll leave it up right for now so we can see it here in the front well, let's go ahead and plug in our micro sd card on this side and it does click in there so theoretically if we have power this should power on on the screen so let's click the all right there we go I'm going to go ahead and remove the protector. And at the moment, you guys can probably see there's nothing there. And right when I plug it, we can see we got lights. And they're actually very bright, which is pretty cool. And we can adjust the brightness there in the back with more and less. So I think we're going to need something white so we can see. So I'm just going to use this CD cover thing. And then I'm going to put the micrometer calibration ruler in there. If we can focus on that. So I'm going to try to go up and down here. Maybe I should spin the focus. There we go. All right, look at that. And then as we lower it, you guys can see we're getting close. But at the same time, we're out of focus now, so we have to readjust the focus. So yeah, depending on how close you want to look at something, you will have to adjust the focus accordingly. But wow, so far, pretty impressive when you guys can see. Now, one thing I wish is that these lights would be a little more white then blue, as the blue kind of gives it too much a bluey tint. It's not bad, but you guys can see like a blue tint there. So, so let's see how close we can get. I'm gonna go all the way down. No, we do need to go up just a little bit. Okay, there we go. So we can get pretty close. And you guys can see we are practically right on it. So three, four millimeters above the 
thing we're looking at. So yeah, that is super close. Let me see if there's enough light here. Yeah, adjusting your lighting is also quite important of what you see. That is insanely close, guys. Yeah, pretty cool. Let's go ahead and see what kind of controls we have here. So we've got the power button, a little light here that glows. We have the M button, let's see what that does. So that takes us to the menu, a language we don't understand. Well, that's not good. So we're gonna select with the arrows up and down and then we're gonna enter by clicking OK, which is this button. Okay, so that's our resolution. Let's see, where's the language? There we go. Let's go to English, press OK. And there we go, now we can understand everything. So two up from there. So the third one up from the bottom is language. So let's go from the top here. We got video resolution is what we looked at earlier. And it's set to the highest, which is 1080p. Then we got photo resolution and it's set actually on lower. So let's go to 10 megapixels. Video splitter. Okay, so this is how long each file is made. Basically, if you keep recording for 15 minutes, it'll start a new file after that. We got out of power off set to off so you can get this thing to turn off if you're not touching it to save battery so i'll probably leave that on five minutes a loop recording keep recording on top of that frequency which we need to be on 60 hertz where i'm at let's click that lcd out of off so it just turns the screen off when you don't use it i guess default settings so this resets everything time settings so this is where you can enter your time and date and to go back you just click on the m and then we got language which we chose and yeah these are all the different languages available and then we got format sd card so let's go ahead and do that it's gonna format it and now we're ready to use it system message which is the version there and yeah that's pretty much it guys that's all of the menus on the settings part so if we click on m it'll go back to the camera so if we're looking at something and we want to digitally zoom we can click these up and down arrows so down is going to zoom in and this is actually i guess a digital zoom in it gets just a little bit closer and then up zooms out a bit so if we click OK, we're going to start recording and we're in video mode right now. So it's actually making a video of what it sees. Click OK again, it's going to stop. So if we hold M, it's going to turn to our next setting, which is photo mode. So now we can take a picture by clicking OK. Now just snap the photo. And if we click the M and hold it again, we're going to choose video or photos that we took that we can preview. So if we go to photo here and click OK, we can see the picture we took just now. So yeah, and you can erase the files from here if you want or not. So so yeah, just holding the M will cycle you through the menus. And now we're back at the just the live view with video mode ready to record. But yeah, guys, it's quite simple to use. Let's go ahead and see if we can stick something else in there and see what kind of interesting things we can see. So I do have this pretty fuzzy microfiber towel. I'm kind of interested to see what it looks like. So let's go up just a little bit and we will see if we can focus on that. And sure enough, we can see the fibers there. It does seem to be a little bit overexposed though. Let's see if I turn it off completely. Actually, it still works fine if you have enough light with no lights at all. Wasn't expecting it to be that good, but yeah, we can kind of see the fibers there on that cloth really in real good detail so here I have which is a 3d printed chainmail style print maybe we can see a little better the layers or the, the finish on top here and sure enough we can we are kind of close a little hard to see maybe but in any case guys we can see every layer and you can see the gaps in this thing which are quite enormous yeah just not too much to see here but also in this corner guys we can see that our battery is kind of low so we do need to charge it and that's where it's indicated so we're not even plugged into anything on the upper portion here so it's running off of the battery so here we have something that can be used with the microscope detailed circuits and whatnot else let's see if we can put this under the scope now we are going to need to bring it up quite a bit and it looks like i will have to hold this thing and you guys can hopefully see there we're looking at it pretty close of all of our transistors and resistors and logics and whatnot else so yeah again i don't know if this lighting is making it worse or better almost feel like no lighting even though it's not as bright it seems to have more detail or i can see more and yeah as long as you adjust the focus to where you need it everything is super crispy and clean so let's say we want to take a picture of this we'll hold in to go to picture and i'll click on ok and we captured it so yeah very cool little scope guys and obviously a lot more versatile than what i've showed you here so you know, if you're doing any kind of coin collection, this would also work very well. You know, you can take pictures, video, there's a lot of adjustability. You do have a remote that has hot buttons for the picture, the video, the play, and also the digital zooming. And you do have to pull out this little thing for it to work. So you guys can see, I can zoom there and it shows you right here how much I'm zooming. I can go straight to playing pictures or video. So yeah, you got lots of cool little features and options with the MS-1 scope.
And as you guys saw there, the outer shut off turned it off after the five minutes that we set. So yeah, if you are interested in Sting, I'll have some links in the description. Check it out. It's super fun for any projects and also even for kids or anyone that's curious of having a microscope that's all built in one like this. So thanks for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.